So I talk a lot about Monzo here on the channel, but I realized I haven't done an in-depth review. So this is what it's gonna be for you. I'm gonna take you through some of those innovative features, which I really believe can be quite transformative in how you approach your relationship with your bank. They will help you track your spending. They will help you in terms of budgeting, making sure you don't spend where you shouldn't do. And they can also help you save more. So lots of really, really good things. I'll take you through those. I'll also take you through some of the negatives because it's not all fantastic. There are pros and cons absolutely with Monzo. Um, and I also will show you inside the app as well so you get a sense of what it looks like. Uh, let's start off very importantly just to kind of say there are a few different Monzo accounts and the one I'm going to focus on here is that free version. I actually have some video reviews looking at Plus and Premium. These are kind of additions where you get the, everything that I'm going to talk about today in the kind of standard Monzo account plus a few extras but you pay a monthly fee to get those. Uh, suffice to say I'm not a huge fan of those extras simply because you can generally get them for less elsewhere but that's not to say you shouldn't consider them if you are a huge monzo fan anyway they are in separate videos this will focus on this main account now you can get this for yourself you can get it as a joint account uh, and there are also a couple of others which i'm not going to cover at all uh, a business account and also a 16 to 17 year old account but say so this will focus on that basic standard account which works exactly the same for joint accounts that you can get from monzo now if you don't know what monzo is i'm probably assuming here that you are aware of it which is why you've come to the video but there's a few things that you do need to be aware of because it's not like your barclays or your halifax or your lloyds or whatever it might be this is a digital only bank the only way to manage your account to access your account is via your phone your smartphone via the monzo app there is no desktop option there is no proper online phone banking there is no proper uh, there are no branches at all that you can go into and chat to someone uh, and do your banking there it is 100 percent via your phone now most of the time i don't know about you i do want to do and i do most of my banking as much as i possibly can uh, on my phone anyway which makes it perfect and loads of people are doing the same thing the use of uh, app banking has increased massively but it is worth bearing this in mind if you're someone who does feel that you would like to have that security of a branch that you can go into if you want to or maybe you're someone who deals in cash quite a lot for whatever reason again there can be problems associated with, with that which i will get to later on but doesn't mean you can rule it out completely if those things are an issue it could well be that you have a supplementary current account that helps you get around some of those uh, negatives again i will go through all the pros and cons as we go through uh, before we open up the app it's probably worth just talking about the debit card itself here it is it is uh, what's known as hot coral pink it's quite identifiable i think of all the different bank cards out there um, i think a lot of other banks are doing something similar now trying to make their cards stand out but it was for a long time from the early adopters you know you took that out of your wallet uh, and people think what is that compared to the traditionally quite dull cards you get from the, the mainstream banks uh, it is a mastercard so which means it's going to be accepted pretty much anywhere and it's very easy and it will be accepted uh, by adding it onto your apple pay and your google pay really easy to do that so if you're so inclined uh, you can pay via your uh, device rather than the card a couple of quick notes on spending as well something i really like about monzo which again a lot of other banks are doing this now so it might not be a reason to get a monzo account but it's good to know they do this you will get instant notifications as long as you turn notifications on in your phone as soon as you tap that card it will pop up and it will tell you exactly what you've spent and where you get a lot more detail on this than you will with with kind of other banks so name of the retailer the location if you want to you can take a photo add a receipt add some notes to it i'm sure most of us don't need to do that and won't do that but if you want to that option is there but again i really really like that instant notification setting and if you don't have notifications on it will be there in the app straight away uh, this is really helpful i think uh, let's say you're in a busy bar you don't necessarily hear what the person said you tap your card you'll know exactly what you spent straight away which is great now that could help you with budgeting and we'll talk about other budgeting tools later on because you know oh right i've just spent 30 quid i've better sort of slow things down or you might think hang on there's no way those two drinks cost me 30 quid i've been overcharged so you can do something about it there and then rather than with a lot of the cards and other sort of bank accounts you're waiting a few days before the, the real money sort of comes through it's also worth mentioning about spending abroad with monzo when i first got the card in 2017 this was the big draw for me and i think it was for a lot of people as well it worked slightly differently back then it was a prepaid account rather than a current account um but you basically uh, there were no fees at all to use it overseas and that was quite a game changer uh, now we have a few more options doing this virgin money and starling monies there are other kind of cards which got a whole video on spending overseas you can check out if you want to 
But back then, Monzo was really like the, the, the first one to kind of really revolutionize that. Now, uh, this has changed slightly. So if you are just spending in restaurants, in bars, in shops, hotels, whatever it is, you won't get charged. That's fine. Just spending with your debit card. If you want to take cash out of an ATM, there are some limits in play. So the broad one is kind of uh, outside the UK and Europe. There is a £200 limit with the free Monzo account. So if you think you're going to go somewhere, you're getting this card primarily for spending overseas, but you think you might get cash out, it's not the best one for you. Look at Starling or Virgin Money or maybe a specialized credit travel credit card. Um, if you don't think you're gonna get much cash out, then yeah, why not? And if you're thinking about it as your main account, but the travel's just an extra thing, it's just worth bearing this in mind. And um, more recently, they've also added in a ATM charge for the UK and the European economic area. Uh, and this is 250 pounds every month, sort of a rolling month. Um, you can avoid this one though. And the way to avoid this is to pay in 500 pounds every month and have a direct debit coming out of the account as well, uh, which isn't too difficult to do and set up. Uh, but again, how often are you gonna use cash? It's not a huge thing that most of us do nowadays. So it's probably not something for we really need to, to worry about. And of course, if you are concerned about it and you don't wanna put those extras in, that 500 pounds, for example, well, just have another current account. I always say you should have more than one current account. Uh, have a different current account at a different bank where there is no uh, limit on the ATM charges. And if you haven't got a cash in there, you just transfer it from the Monzo app to your other account and go to the ATM with the other debit card to get the money out. So it's not a biggie. You can get around it quite easily. Paying in cash, I should say, is a little bit different, different and a little bit more complicated because um, there are no branches. There's no obvious place for you to go. But there are uh, a huge number of pay points locations Generally, these are shops, corner shops, or whatever it might be. Find the list online where you can go in and pay in the money, uh, some cash into your card there, and it goes straight away into your account, almost straight away. Um, but there are a few limits here as well. Um, the most you can put in in a single time is 300 pounds. And there's a one pound charge every time you put cash in. And there's also a 1,000 pound limit every 180 days. So that's every six months. So again, most of us is not gonna be an issue. We're not gonna deal with cash that often. But if you think you will, maybe you are expecting some birthday money coming through or Christmas money, uh, or maybe someone owes you some cash and they pay it to you in actual cash rather than a bank transfer. It's worth bearing this in mind. But again, easily get around it by having a second, third, whatever is current account at a different bank. You pay the money in there and you just transfer it. It's gonna take you seconds to do this. So I wouldn't get too worried about it, but it is important to know that this is uh, one of the factors there. A couple more things to say about spending. Uh, you can click a few little buttons uh, within the app and you will get up a list of all your direct debits and standing orders. Basically they call it committed spending, the regular stuff that's coming out. So it's great, that's all in one place, really easy to find that. Uh, and you can also, if you wish, and you are with someone who also has a Monzo account, use an app feature called Split the Bill. So you've just bought something, doesn't have to be a meal out or something, does it with a bill, it can be a product that you've bought. But you can tap on that and very quickly divide it, however you want to divide it, send the information over to the other Monzo uh, user, uh, and they can then pay you straight away from the app. So that's quite nice, but again, it does require you both to have the Monzo account for that purchase, but that's kind of spending for you. Some good things there, nothing necessarily sort of that stands out as amazing, but generally it's a good card for your everyday spending. Where I think Monzo gets even more interesting though is when we go to budgeting. Now there are a number of things here which uh, I think will be really, really useful to you. Um, and the first one is this thing called POTS. Uh, a Monzo POT is basically a bit like the old jam jar method or budgeting the envelope method where you would, let's say you had 100 pounds in cash, you would put 20 quid in one, 30 in another, 40 in another, 10 in another, all for their different reasons they had. So one of them might be for, you know, your bills, one might be for your lunch, whatever it might be, okay, classic kind of budgeting system. Well, you can do that digitally. You can create up to 20 different pots within your Monzo account and separate your money however you like. Now, this could be in that kind of budgeting method is separating it for particular expenses, or it could be you wanna use them for savings, and I'll come back to savings in a second. But again, you can use them for whatever you want. You can rename, you can add a photo, all this kind of stuff. Now, these appear on the app uh, separate and the money that's within them, when you move your money from your main account into one of these pots, it goes out of your main current account and now lives in this kind of segregated part of the account. Uh, and that has a few impacts you need to know about. Obviously your overall 
amount that you can spend, the summary, which is the top of the app, uh, that will be lower because that will only say show what's still in your current account for user on your debit card, direct debits and, and transfers. Um, and to use the money that's in a pot, you have to then transfer it back to the main account in the most part. Now, there is one exception here, which is, I think, a really kind of good exception. You can delegate uh, one of those pots to be your bills pot. So we talked about how you can see all that kind of um, upcoming spending quite easily within the app. Well, if they're all also within a single pot, uh, you can make sure the direct debits come straight out of there. So let's say you've got paid, you've got 1500 quid, your, all your bills come to 800 pounds, transfer straight away 800 quid into that particular pot. And that just means that you are covered. You are sort of making them in a separate area. And this has a few really good uses. Uh, you're guaranteeing that you've got enough money to cover the bills for a start. You're not accidentally going to spend more uh, than you intended. Um, but again, it makes you realize exactly also what you have got left to spend elsewhere. So I'm a big, big fan of this. And this is the only one of the apps that does this. Much as I love Starling, it doesn't have this feature to pay uh, bills directly out of one of your pots. Now, there is something called the salary sorter, which means you can sort of when you get some money come in, it doesn't have to be your salary, it can be any kind of money as long as it's over 100 quid and quickly say I want this amount into my bills pot, this amount into my holiday pot, this amount into my whatever, whatever pots you've got, whatever they are, um, and sort of do that. It doesn't automate it every month, you have to go back in, but it will remember what you did previously and then transfer that money across. It's a nice little feature, not essential, but if you're using it every month, it, it could be quite handy. Now, sticking with budgeting, when you do make a transaction, Monzo will automatically tag that purchase to a certain category. Now, you can't customize these categories. Uh, they're not in the free version, at least. That's something that comes with a, a paid version of Monzo. Um, but they're quite broad ones. You're probably going to be fine with most of them. Things like eating out, transport, groceries. It will tag it. And obviously, if you're not happy with that, you can change where it would sit within those categories. Um, and, and this is obviously quite useful from a kind of very sort of cumulative point of view. So you could see on a monthly basis uh, how much you spent on, let's say it's transport, how much on eating out. And if something, oh, hang on, that feels quite a lot. You kind of get that kind of shock that you need to go, I'm spending too much here uh, when I should be spending it over here instead. So that's really nice. And if you wanna take it a step further, all those categories, if you want to, you can set a monthly budget to it. And this is a spending budget rather than kind of a sort of step back on what you actually spend this is a budget based on what you plan to spend so it's really really useful so let's say you're going to put uh, 50 quid every single month uh, that is how much you want to go towards your eating out budget cap it at 50 quid now it doesn't mean you can't spend more than 50 quid if you've got the money in your main account you can do that but it will tell you and you'll be able to see when you're approaching that limit and maybe that's a prompt for you to rein things in a little bit so really really like this again if you are someone who struggles to keep track um, sometimes easily sort of overspending in areas you wish you hadn't it's a nice way to kind of uh, help you monitor what is going on now this also comes into play with something called left to spend now this kind of overall amount balance of your account that you see below that there's a little number and it says how much money you've got left um, for, for a certain uh, date that date by default is the end of the calendar month but you can change it to your payday let's say you get paid on the 15th you can make it 15th to the 14th so it will kind of count down and this will take away that kind of uh, committed spending that you've already got it will take away obviously any spending you've made but it also will take into account these budgets that you set so let's say you've got you don't want to go above that spending amount it will say you've got five pounds left this month you know in the next 11 days based on those budgets that you've set again helping you kind of realize uh, whether you're spending more or less than you want to than you intend to you've still got that overall total at the top uh, but it's just a nice way of kind of uh, making sure you're aware exactly what is left taking into account and say that kind of committed spending as well now pots can also be quite useful when it comes to saving as i said you can set these up and they're quite nice ones for let's say you've got a target a goal you're saving for let's say it's a holiday you put a picture of a holiday on there that is proven to help motivate you to put money aside into your savings uh, and that's fantastic a great way of doing things you can automate money to move over there as well essentially a standing order so that's great the money can go straight away uh, as soon as you get paid into your different savings pot again building it up as time goes along now you don't earn any interest with these standard pots uh, there are extra savings pots uh, which do have a very 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 low rate of interest so I mean I'm not a fan of them for that point of view 
Personally, I wouldn't use Monzo for my savings unless you feel that's going to help you put money aside. But maybe what you could do is every now and again, transfer that money out into a different account with a better rate of interest. However, and I'm not going to go into detail on this now because I've got a whole video on it. Something I really, 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 really love about Monzo is how you can automate uh, and essentially gamify the savings process. One of them is inbuilt and it's called basically Roundup. So let's say you spend 15 pounds, 30 somewhere, an extra 70p will be moved from your main account into your designated pot where you want the roundups to go. Nice little way of gradually building up a little bit of extra cash uh, without having to put any effort in. That's there by default, but you can use something called if this then that to really take it to the next level. You can make money move when you go to a location. You can make money move when it rains. Uh, you can use some of these savings challenges. Normally people look at these at the start of the year, but you can do them anytime where uh, 1p is moved on day one, 2p on day two, 3p on day three, carries on like that throughout the entire year. Um, but it's automated. You don't have to remember to do it. The money just gets moved over. Loads of lovely things like that. But again, check out my video with more details on those. Now, finally, the last thing to tell you about Monzo, the things that I really love about it are some of those extra features, which again, lots more banks are doing this, but again, Monzo does them very well and did them kind of first. First of all, you can see your PIN number. You can see your debit card number, which is fantastic as well. Particularly useful, you can copy those just by holding down. So if you want to, you know, you're on your phone buying something, copy the long card number, paste it into the uh, you know, the basket where you're buying something makes it a lot easier, means you're not going to type the wrong number in, saves a bit of time as well. You can share your account details if someone owes you money. Really, really simple to do this. One of the easiest out of all the different banking apps, I would say. You can freeze your card as well. That's fantastic. If you lose your card or you think you've lost it, freeze it. And then when you find it, fingers crossed you do find it, you can defrost it and it's active again. And if you don't, then you can report it stolen and get another card sent through. There's an option to block gambling on the Monzo card. Uh, you can't use it for those things. If that's a problem for you, use it. A great feature. Again, most banks do that nowadays. And there's also something with Monzo do called early payday. If your employer uh, pays you via something called BACS, there are a couple of ways they might pay you, but if it's via BACS, then Monzo can see that. And at 4 p.m. the day before you're due to be paid, it will advance you that money because it knows it's in the system. It knows it's coming uh, and they'll send that money through. Again, get paid a day early, but if you're budgeting well, it shouldn't be an issue because it just carries on that cycle. Now, Monzo is completely safe to use. It's got you know as much security as any of the other banks have got. So hopefully nothing can go wrong there. Obviously things can go wrong. There's not going to completely guarantee that something couldn't go down at any time, but that's the same for any bank. Another reason why I suggest you should have more than one current account in case there are any problems. There was a, a lot of news last year, and I reported on it as well, that Monzo were struggling financially, and they were. They have been losing money during the pandemic, hence why they introduced all these extra charges and these extra sort of paid accounts. Uh, yeah, so there is the chance that they might not survive, but because the bank is FCA regulated and really importantly, it is covered by the financial services compensation scheme that you will get your money back if it was to go under up to £85,000. And let's face it, you shouldn't have 85k in any current account, okay, let alone a Monzo. So I wouldn't worry about that at all. It's worth keeping an eye on it. And if there are any other issues that come along, I would obviously let you know in my regular banking updates that I do every single month. But Again, I wouldn't use that as a reason not to get a Monzo account, okay? Hopefully, the more people use it, the more people who use it for all their spending, all their general banking needs, the best, more likely they are to kind of just carry on and be uh, very successful. They are getting a lot of new customers every single month, often more than the other high street banks. They've got more than 5 million customers already, still attracting new investment in. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. Uh, if this is the right account for you, it's the right account for you. Now, the only other thing I think probably worth chatting about is the overdraft option with Monzo. Now, if you don't apply for an overdraft at all, you won't get credit checked for the account, which is quite rare. Only Monzo and Starling really won't do a hard credit check uh, for you to get the accounts. So that could be useful if you don't have a great credit history. Um, but if you do want an overdraft, you will be credit checked. Um, and like most other banks now, there's a very, very good chance. In fact, the majority of customers, they're going to get an overdraft of 39%. Very, very expensive. I would not encourage you to do this at all. If you need an overdraft because you borrow money, there probably are cheaper ways to get cash. However, Monzo potentially, and it does depend on the strength of your credit report, potentially might give you a 19% or 29% overdraft. Again, still very, very, very high. There still are cheaper ways to borrow money, but it's just worth bearing in mind that if you are desperate for an overdraft, 
um, there is the chance you might get a lower rate than elsewhere. But again, I think there are better options for you out there. So that's Monzo. That's what's going on. As you can tell, I am a fan. I do think it's really good. I think it's well worth considering this if you think you want some help and support with tracking your spending and the budgeting side of things, because I think it will make a huge difference. If you're not worried about that and you just want those kind of extra features, the ability to see your PIN, to see your card, to share your details, to make quick and fast payments, to get instant notifications, well, you can get all of that with Starling Bank as well. And Starling Bank has the edge slightly because there are no charges for using your card overseas full stop. You can take money out of the ATMs home and abroad as well. And you can pay money in at the post office with no charge and much, much, much higher limits. So really, I think, yes, Monzo is a great account. Starling is a great account. The one that's best for you really depends on how you're going to use it. But absolutely, it's the standout one, I think, for budgeting and spending and tracking uh, of your money every single time you make a purchase. Now, if you think this is useful, if you like this review, please do hit that subscribe and notification bell and leave me a comment below. If you've got a Monzo account, do you like it? What do you think about it? What are your favorite things about it? How do you feel it compares to other accounts like Starling or some of the more traditional apps out there? I would love to get your feedback on that as well. My name is Andy Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, cheers. And here are a couple more videos you might find interesting.